think I'm going to start by going to our, our slide from before. And to increase X-ray interactions, I think a better way of, of saying it is that it's going to depend, just use your logic, right? So it's going to depend on the atomic number, it's going to depend on the density, and, and the higher the atomic number, the higher the density. So they're generally proportional, however, they're different. So that's something to have in mind because we are going to show you why in a minute. So density, atomic number, and obviously thickness. So all those things are going to account for that. However, the mass attenuation coefficient is really your linear attenuation coefficient divided by density, and that's what we mentioned before. And by doing this, we kind of remove density out of the equation, and we're really describing attenuation as a function of mass, and perhaps even as a function of atomic number. And that being said, we go back to photoelectric versus Compton, and I think for test purposes, what you need to know is that photoelectric effect is going to be, I'm writing equal here, it's really proportional, I just like the equal sign better on this case, I think it's easier to see, it's going to be proportional to the density times the atomic number divided by the energy, but you see the atomic number and the energy are both cubed for the photoelectric effect in terms of proportionality. The density, you're going to see different subjects talking about physical density and, and electron density. And you need to know that for this subject, we're really talking about uh, things and we're making a lot of assumptions. And here we're making the assumptions that we're dealing with soft tissues and we're dealing at diagnostic energies or x-rays that, that we use in diagnostic imaging. And, and in that scenario, our density, whether physical or electron density, is going to be proportional or very similar. So we don't really need to worry about whether they mean electron density or physical density. For our environment, we're going to be, they're going to be synonymous. And what we're showing here is that there is a similar relationship with density in both the photoelectric label here as PE and the Compton. However, as we increase energy, the photoelectric effect is going to decrease. And by energy, we mean the KEV, the energy of our X-ray on tissue. Once we increase that, the, the amount of photoelectric interactions are going to decrease significantly. It also decreases with Compton, but it's just a linear proportion, it's not cubed. Compton doesn't really care that much about atomic number, it's, it's really more heavily focused on, on the density. Because Compton, you're going to have interaction both with the K-shell electrons as well as the outer shell electrons, so it really it doesn't matter that the uh, you have good K-shell electron energy to, to create Compton. However, for PE, for electric effect, that's very important. And the, as you increase the atomic number, you're going to have the proportionality is going to be, um, is, is going to be cubed to have more, more photoelectric effects in, in, in atomic number. Um, that being said, I, I want to make a brief pause here, and I'm going to try to draw a, a graph in which I show how the, the same concept I just described, but a little bit more, more visual. So let's say I'm going to choose blue for our to draw our photoelectric effect, and MAC stands for mass attenuation coefficient and it's going to go from zero and it's going to increase in the y-axis and the kv is also going to go from zero and increase all the way along the horizontal or x-axis and you can make up the energies we can use for example um, going up to 300 kvs on the horizontal axis and a mass uh, attenuation coefficient of 10. so let's start by drawing our photoelectric interactions and this is assuming we're interacting with soft tissue so we're going here and you're gonna see this should be coming out as a straight line and with very relatively small increases in KEV you can see that our energy is decreasing um, or, or the as you said the amount of photoelectric interactions are decreasing as 
the KV increases. And you might ask, how do I know the photoelectric interactions are decreasing? Well, MAC or mass attenuation coefficient is an indirect measure of the amount of interaction we're having in a given tissue. Uh, we, we should know that the mass attenuation coefficient is specific for every interaction and then we have a curve that's created which is the addition of all the different interactions and you'll see how that works out in a minute. Now we're going to move on and we're going to do the red, we're going to use it for the Brunchalong, I mean sorry for the Compton. For the Compton we're going to start a little bit lower here and you'll see that as we increase energy the MAC is going to decrease as well but at a much lower rate. And I'm going to use green to illustrate kind of how the, the MAC for the entire tissue would, would behave and this will be an average of those of those numbers we talked about. And to draw it as nice as possible here. And the green one is just the average one. So you might you might ask now what's the importance of, of this and what I'm trying to show here is what happens as we increase energy and how MAC is an indirect measurement of the amount of interactions we're having. I think the best example that explained this for me was the example of the chest x-ray. You have a chest x-ray and you're dealing with lungs, you're dealing with the heart, you're dealing with muscles, and you're dealing with bone. And in reality, although we intuitively think of all those as having very different um, they do have very different densities, but we might think they have different atomic number, but, but it turns out that their atomic numbers are actually pretty similar. So going back to our formula, we see we have similar atomic numbers in the area of the chest and a chest x-ray. We know that this factor here is not going not gonna to be very important in distinguishing between two different tissues. But I think it gets a little bit more complicated because we're changing from dealing with a single tissue and now we go to diagnostic radiology in which we're dealing to trying to increase contrast in our image from the differences in different tissues. So all these tissues are going to have different MACs for photoelectric but they're all going to have very similar atomic number. So we already know that that atomic number is going to be the not going to be very useful and we know that at low energy so let's say we try to get a, an x-ray at very low energies where the photoelectric effect predominates we won't really have a lot of difference between the different tissues because this factor here uh, the atomic number is going to be very similar so it doesn't matter that they're very different in density in the end, they all going to have a lot of photoelectric effect. And if they all have a lot of photoelectric effect, we won't be able to see things that well. However, and this is what we do in reality, if we move to a higher KEV, so we use a little bit of a higher energy x-ray, when this interaction has happened, what we'll see is that the density, we're going to be relying more on Compton, because I already told you that's the energy so among at least uh, in soft tissues, more than 25 keV, the interaction that you're going to start favoring is going to be Compton interaction. And you can see that from our graph that as we increase keVs moving towards the right, we're going to have more Comptons. And Compton really relies on the density of the tissue. And over there we can exploit the differences of the bone density, the lung tissue density, the muscles and the heart, for example. And we know that we're going to get those difference in densities that are going to be reflected in our x-ray. So we, we already got to this point and you might ask, well, I, I see that you have an E for the energy as a denominator in the sense that as you increase energy, you, you are decreasing also the amount of Compton interactions that you have. 
and that's true. Although we're decreasing Compton, we're, as you can see from our graph, which is our red line, we're decreasing it, but only at a very small amount. And we're getting the benefit that we're decreasing the, the prior photoelectric effect that really only tells me differences in atomic number, but is not telling me really a difference in density, or at least not as much as Compton. So it does decrease on both photoelectric and dense and uh, Compton's with increasing energy, but it, it's just a matter of proportionality where you have photoelectric effect having an energy that's cubed and the Z that stands for atomic number that's also cubed. I hope that makes sense. There's a lot of information in this slide, uh, but I think it, it's a good summary of what you need to know when talking about photoelectric and Compton interactions. Thank you very much.